Hey, welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're a Wednesday fan, uh, you know that she wore a snood in the TV series. When her friend made her that, the look that she gave when she's like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, I literally lost my mind because I knew exactly what it was. She wasn't having it. And then it eventually makes its way more into the series as it goes along. So today we have a Wednesday inspired snood that I'm gonna be teaching you from an absolute beginner point of view. So if you don't know how to crochet, and you want to create this, I'm going to be taking my time to show you step by step. And for those that are familiar with crochet, um, you have this opportunity to download it, see the video description of this video in order to get that if you want to just follow the pattern. And for other people, you can just skip ahead. So see the video chapters, and I'm going to teach this from a beginner's perspective so that you can have a crochet snood just like her. <laughs> So if you've not been with me before, I'm a host for Yarnspirations.com, also for my own company, The Crochet Crowd. And how I start my videos is that I look at the pattern and say, well, you're going to need two balls of the black, and this is Red Heart Super Saver, and then just one ball of the soft white. So you can see that the snood is actually made of all black, and then the tassels, if you want to add those. Remember, with any patterns, if you don't like something, you can omit something by leaving it off, and that's something that you can decide for yourself. So you can make tassels. They show you how to make it here, but there's also tutorials available here on YouTube for this kind of concept and of course if you don't want that then don't use it. So this here is saying that we need to hold two strands together of A. A represents the color. So if you look over here if A is right here with the contrast black. Contrast A is black. So with A hold two together and TOG means together and CH means change. So they're trying to teach you because it is a beginner pattern of how this thing is done. And so what we want to do is we want to chain 120. So before we do that, I'm going to show you with two different colors being used in my hand at the same time. It's recommending a size US. So if you're in the United States, um, they usually have the letters that represent a crochet hook. And here I'm Canadian and in countries that use metric, we use a millimeter. So I usually say it's an eight millimeter size L crochet hook. And when you look at the crochet hooks, they're usually labeled on here uh, what they are. So it's an L and eight millimeters. So if one of them is missing, it's still eight or it's L. Okay. So this is something that you can decide for yourself. So this is a bigger crochet hook than normal because we're going to use two strands at the same time. So sometimes the hooks are different in orientation. So if you're struggling with crochet, sometimes it's not you as the person, but it's sometimes the hook. So there are many different types of crochet hooks available out there. So you got to find the hook that really matches your lifestyle, really what is more comfortable for you. So let's get on with this and I'm going to show you how to use two strands together with one and show you the basics and then we'll walk through this pattern together through demonstration. So black is too hard to show you on camera. So I'm going to use two different colors so that you can see how they're working together. And I want you to pretend that these two colors are actually one strand. So you're, they're coming from two different balls behind the scenes. So in your case, there'll be two different uh, balls of the black. So you're going to put them in your hand. So the first thing that you need to know is how to do a slip knot. With crochet, you have to start off with a knot because everything will fall apart if you don't. So let's demonstrate a slip knot. I want you to point like this with your finger and I'll hold. So just point. Take the yarn here and I want you to put it over top of your finger and wrap it. So you're going to come up and wrap over and over like this. I'll demonstrate this a few times. Don't look at these as four strands. Look at them as only two. Pretend that they're together because they are. Okay, so point, so up, and wrap, and over. One more time for fun. So up, and over, like this. And now with your three fingers that you have here, I want you just to grab both of the sets and put them into your hands like this. And I'll hold. So I want you to think about the game of leapfrog. And what I need you to do is that this is the back frog, this is the front frog. I want this frog to jump over this frog, but land here. Then once that is there, we're gonna take this frog and jump over and he is so excited that when he jumps, he's gonna miss my finger and go completely off. This is how I describe the slip knot. 
So let's play the game of leapfrog and I'll demonstrate this a few times. So you're gonna just pinch and jump, 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 jump and over like this. And then take the new frog that's in behind, this one, and jump, 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 it's so excited, it jumps over the finger and this is the completion of a slip knot, like that. So let's play the game of leapfrog again. So wrap, so play. So jump over, and then take the new frog here, so excited, it jump, 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 right over top, like this. And there is your slip knot. One more time for leapfrog. So wrap, jump, jump, and jump, 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 jump. And so this here is the starting knot of crochet. So now we have to get our crochet hook ready because we need to put it inside the loop here. And when you go to pull on it, you wanna pull the strand that's leading to the yarn ball, ignore this. And when you pull on it, don't pull on it so tight that it's like strangling your hook. You wanna be, want be able to slide it nicely up and down. Okay, so you can see there. So let's talk about the anatomy of the knots that are created with crochet. You'll notice because of the hook that you can't get this out very easily. You see that? Because the hook snags the yarn, which is what you want. So the only way to get a hook out of this is that the knots that you make in crochet when you do stitches form a teardrop shape like this. So in order to get the hook out, you need to kind of just push up with your, your hook, turn the hook upside down so that the hook will slide in between the teardrop here and out. Okay, so try that. So just do, 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 it's stuck, 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 turn it upside down and just push up a little bit and it slides right out. So when you're crocheting, you have to concentrate when you're going to do this is to be able to orientate this so that it will always be able to easily fall out. A good crochet hook, to my point of view, has a flat thumb rest. So when the, your thumb is sitting flat on it, you can see the orientation of the hook is doing up. For crochet hooks that don't have that orientation, they're much harder to use because you have to constantly look at your hook to make sure that the orientation's right. So if you are looking to purchase, look for one with a thumb rest. It'll make your life a lot easier. So how are we gonna hold the yarn in our hands now that we have this in? That's our next step. So how to hold the yarn. I, I am a right-handed person, but this could be a left-handed tutorial. It's just a camera flip if that is true. So what I want to do is that I want you to push this in front of your hand like this and leave your hand flat. I want you to concentrate on this space right here. And I want you to concentrate between your pinky and your ring finger right there. The yarn end is going to go up over top of these three fingers and then play like a little violin in this space. People hold their yarn in different ways, so you may see different YouTube hosts holding it. This is the way my mom showed me, and this is the way I've been doing it for almost 40 years. It feels like 40. So what I want to do is that I want to slide in my hand. So open up your hand and just pick this up and slide, slide, slide your hand like this. And I'll move it back and slide it like this. I'll hold so that you can get that orientation. So it's coming up, it's coming underneath my pinky, over top of my three fingers, and then right into the space. Okay, so put down, just open your hand and slide. In time, you won't have to do that. You can just do it really quite easily and fast. In crochet, we wanna use this finger and this finger the most. This finger here is for tension and this here of the opening and the closing of the pinky is also for tension. So what I want you to do, take the yarn out and I want you to turn your hand over and I want you to pinch your driving finger, that's what I call it, my driving finger, my middle finger, to my thumb. So you're going to pinch like this, like a flamenco dancer. Okay, so just pinch. Can you do that? 
So when you're holding your yarn and stuff, it's being held with these two fingers. And this finger is gonna be jumping up and down like a jackrabbit. And this finger is gonna be opening and closing in behind. If this sounds confusing, just be patient with yourself. It will happen naturally. So let's slide our hand back into position and just put it to where I showed you here. And I want you to pull this yarn back so that the knot is probably right, right about here. So just pull back the two strands and do that. So my goal is, is to pick up my hand and pinch this slip knot with this finger and this thumb when I go to do it. So just pick everything up and pinch like this. See how this finger just naturally wants to get out of the way? So you don't wanna pinch like this, you wanna keep this finger up. See this? This is where you're going to play with your crochet. It's like a violin string. So whenever you need yarn, you're gonna go right into this pocket that you've just created to create more um, stitch work for yourself or more um, yarn. I'm gonna turn my hand over just to show you. And so it's coming up underneath my pinky over top of here. So if I need this to be looser, I lower down here, loose, loose, loose. And if I need this to be tighter, I raise up. You'll naturally do this in time. It may not be today, but be patient. Learning crochet is just a few day process. It's not very big in time. So if it's too loose for you right now, just grab the yarn that's leading to the ball and just pull on it a little bit tighter and that will tighten things back up. I want you to have a nice violin string right here. Now the way that I hold the crochet hook is next. In crochet, you'll see some crocheters doing it this way, and then you'll see other people doing it this way. This is called the pencil grip. You're not gonna learn that here on my channel. In time, the action on your wrist can cause carpal tunnel, and it can cause some serious damage to your hands. So that's just a known thing in today's era. So what I do recommend is holding it like a butter knife, like this using your thumb orientation. So if you need to learn to crochet this way, then please don't use this channel because it's not gonna be helpful for you. But if you go this way, instead of the, all the action being with your wrist kind of turning like this, it'll be a lot easier on your hand to keep your hand more stable and more straight. So let's put this back in. So our next goal is to show you how to make a chain. To make a chain, you were going to grab both of these strands. Now this just could be one strand, but because we're working on the snoo today, we're gonna to treat the two strands as if they're one. So what I want you to do is that I want you to rowboat. It's called yarn over, but I say rowboat when you're learning. And so you're gonna move the hook up, and this is the head, this is the throat, and this is the shaft. These are real definitions. So your goal here is to get your yarn always to stay within the shaft. The shaft dictates the size of the stitch. So if you stay within the throat, the diameter here is much smaller and you will have a lot of issues. So whenever you go to play, keep moving the yarn down the shaft in order to get to the right size. You were going to yarn over or rowboat. So you just, and I'm gonna demonstrate this several times, so be patient. So you're just gonna move the hook backward and you were going to rowboat. And when I mean rowboat, you're going to turn the hook upside down like this, because I already showed you that in order to get it out of here, the hook uh, must be upside down. And what you're going to do is just pull. And when you pull, it's just going to pull through that slip knot. See, and if I don't turn it over, it'll snag. So you want it to stay turned over like this, and you're pulling both of the strands through, and you want it push forward and get to the shaft in order to dictate the amount of yarn that you needed. You can let this go at any time, not a big deal, and reposition your hand on the, the chain you just made and pinch. So you're just gonna rotate back. So rowboat or yarn over, turn over and pull. If you're new to crochet, your chain sizes can be all over the place. It takes time to get the tension. Don't be too hard on yourself. Let go, pinch the new chain, and ro rotate back. So yarn over, 
and pull. We're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do 10 more, so we'll count those out together. Okay, so let's do that. So let's say 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three, two, and one. So in the Wednesday snood that you saw, because both colors are black, this will appear as a solid black, but I'm using two different colors to show you how it's operating here. So these yarns change positions. You can clearly see that because the top of this is pink and then sometimes it's the zinc color. So my point being is that it does change positions and you don't need to worry about it. Just keep operating the hands in your hands as if you're doing this way. So in this particular pattern, we are going to be using, um, what do we have here? We're going to be using double crochet. So the double crochet is standard. And so I'm gonna teach you how to do a double crochet before we get into the pattern itself. So this is still part of the learning process. So I wanna teach you double crochet. Now double crochet is the most commonly used stitch of crochet itself. And it says in the pattern um, that we're gonna be using double crochet. So I'm just gonna have you just to demonstrate what it looks like. And I want you to count back to the fourth chain. So just don't count the one that's on the hook. Say this is one, two, three, and right here is the fourth, and that is where I'm going to play. What I want to do is that I want to use this chain then as a double crochet. I'll demonstrate what the demo, uh, double crochet looks like. So you're gonna wrap the hook first and turn it over, like I showed you, don't pull it through, and I want you to go through the chain that I already showed you, and you're gonna grab and go through the chain. So you're gonna push the hook through the chain. So there will be two strands on top. So just think about the two are together as one. So there's one and two, and there should be one strand at the bottom. So in my case, because it's double stranded, you see four on top, two at the bottom. You're then going to push the hook forward and you were going to yarn over, grab the yarn and pull through. Now the goal is, is to get to one loop back onto the hook. Don't forget to push it down the shaft. So to do that, you're going to yarn over and pull through just the two, just pretend that they're the same, the two are, are one. So just push through. So pull, 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 pull. And you're pulling through two sets and then yarning over and pulling it through two. That was a double crochet. So let me double crochet in the next chain. So you're just going to wrap and go into the next chain. It's right here. Push through. Make sure that you get everything that you needed to get. Okay, so when you push through, there should be four strands on top in this case. So you can see the four and two are on the bottom. You're going to yarn over, pull through, and then we need to pull through two and two to get back to the top. So yarn over, pull through two. So two sets and yarn over, pull through the other two sets. Let's do five of these together. So let's we'll start with the first one. So we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go into the next chain, confirming that we have four strands on top and two at the bottom. And we're yarning over, pulling it through that chain and then pull through two and two. So that was a five. So let's do number four. That was 
as number four. So I didn't grab the chain properly, I can tell by the count counting. Now with black yarn, it's gonna be harder to see the stitch work. So you just need a brighter light or, or sit in the sunlight or natural light in order to see the stitch work. So it might be harder to crochet this stuff at nighttime if you're using dark yarn. I think I have two more to go. You saw me just pull yarn in. If the yarn is snagging anywhere, it changes the size of the stitch. So you wanna make sure that the yarn coming to your hands is always just naturally wanting to flow. So if you're tugging on it, it will change the size of the stitch. So that was the double crochet. So now that you know how to chain and double crochet, you're gonna be able to do this snood completely. So without further ado, I'm going to pull everything out. So you can just pull, 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 and we're gonna reset and get ourselves ready for the snood that you see in the pattern all the way from the scratch. So let's begin to work on the snood itself and let's begin. So we're gonna create our slip knot. I already showed you how to do that. So play the game of leapfrog and insert your hook in. So we have to chain a total of 120. If you wanna change the size of the snood, you can change it to any size chain that you want. So maybe if you want 110 instead of 120, it's very easy to be able to change, uh, change things. So what I want you to do in this particular case is that I'm gonna show you a tip because it says careful not to uh, take care not to twist the chain. I'm gonna show you a secret that we know behind the scenes that us people do. So let's just chain 20. So let's start and just chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So if you haven't got 20 yet, just put me on pause, get your 20 done, and then just come back to me in just a moment. If you have 20 on, let's continue. I want you just to pull this up, create a large loop and take this off. Follow the chain back with the side facing up so that there's not a twist. And I want you to put the very last chain in onto the hook from the back. Like this. I then want you to put this back on. And what this is going to do is that when you go to pull it, you're gonna pull it back onto your hook. I want you to ignore this right here, and I want you to continue to count so that you have 120 stitches, so you currently have a, uh, 20 on here. And what this is going to do, it's gonna build out the chain to be longer. So let's just do another 10 to show you. So we say um, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So you can see that this chain will not twist now because it's been orientated onto your hook already. So if you don't do that, then what you have to do is un make sure it's not tangled before you finish it off when you do the end. So please now chain all the way to 120. You already have 30 done now and just get the remaining done and then put me on pause and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. Once you have 120 on here, and again, it can be any size that you want. Okay, this has now 50 because for demonstration purposes, I can show you what you need to do. So if you have 120, then what I need you to do is this yarn over and you're gonna pull through this one and this one at the same time. And this will make 
the, the ring that is going to hold the snood. So now you have a full center ring. Okay, so it'll be much bigger, but you get the idea. Let's do the first round. The nice thing about this particular pattern is that if say you have 121 stitches instead of 120, it's okay. This pattern doesn't matter. So if you have 119 or 118, it's okay too. So to start in crochet, we normally start with the chain three and that counts as the as a double crochet itself. So you're just gonna chain three. So yarn over through once, twice, and three times. And this is considered the first stitch. Make sure you grab both of the strands at the same time. So now you're gonna work in this direction and go into each one of the chains all the way around. Okay, and just like I showed you before when we did a double crochet, so we want the four strands to stay on top and the two to be at the bottom. So we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go into the next chain right here. So make sure that there's four strands on top and two are on the bottom. And you're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two sets, and yarn over, pull through two. So this is the next chain that you wanna go into. See the orientation? So you're gonna yarn over and going into the next one right here. Pull through, pull through two, and two. Next one is right here. So you're gonna double crochet yourself all the way around your chain. There technically should be 120 stitches, which includes the chain three as one stitch. So there will be actually technically 119 double crochet and one chain three, which equals a double crochet. So there will be 120. So continue to double crochet all the way around your chain. Take your time, not a race. And you will see yourself getting better and better. And this is a great starting project to learn to crochet for the first time. So look for the orientation and keeping the stitch work looking great. Take your time. If you drop things, it's okay. It's not like knitting. If you drop a stitch, you can always, it's called frogging to rip it, rip it. So if you make a mistake, just pull it out, reset your needle back in or your hook back in and retry again. The only person that's gonna be judging you on this is yourself. So take a time, enjoy the process. So please keep double crocheting around your chain, put me on hold, and then I'll show you what's next. So just come all the way around. It's got a twist to it, it naturally happens, so I just wanna keep this in the tutorial. So if this is happening to you, it's okay. Don't have to panic. I want you to think about this as a waist band around your waist. And so if it was like this, it would be twisted, right? So you want to untwist the beginning one so that it remains flat. So just turn it and it can, you can go in either direction depending on how it's twisted and just keep taking a look at it and seeing if you're making it more twisted or whether it goes in the other direction. And the goal is, is that this needs to be flat. Okay, so now it's not there. Okay, so I'm looking and just kind of seeing where things are gonna lie and I, this is it. Okay, so now it's flat. It's called a slip stitch. And what I want to do is that I wanna go in the top of the chain three for a slip stitch. So you're just gonna go into the top of the chain three, don't go into a space, go right into the chain work itself, and that'll hold it there. And then take the yarn that is going to the yarn ball and you wanna put it onto your needle or your hook. Sorry, I've been learning to knit lately. So just pull through and through and take a look at it make sure that it's still flat okay so you follow it around and so if you were to wear it there would not be a twist you are now ready then for the remaining of the snood so now what we're going to do to start a new round you were going to chain three so one two and three this is considered your first double crochet 
So look at it like apartment building. See this apartment building? This apartment building is sitting on this apartment building. This is how I teach crochet. So this apartment building needs a double crochet to sit on top of it. So right on top of the apartment building is right here, the roof. And so when you go to build the next double crochet, you're gonna wrap and go to the roof of that apartment building, the double crochet, and insert in, and there should be four strands on top of the needle or the hook. I don't know why I keep calling it needle today. I want to double crochet, so I'm gonna yarn over, pull through. So instead of the chain, you're doing the stitches. And so your yarn over, pull through two and two. And now that you've got more of a project in your hand to hold, it's a lot easier to crochet. So that apartment building has an apartment building that's sitting on top of it. So this apartment building needs one of those two. And you're just gonna keep going around, adding in your double crochets on top of the existing double crochets that you see below. Okay, so this one needs something. Yarn over and in, pull through, pull through two and two. And let's do five more. So we're gonna say and five. And four. Two and one. And I want you to continue to go all the way around doing double crochet to where you had started and I'll show you where to finish when you get all the way around. So do that and put me on hold now. So I'm coming all the way around and I wanna make sure I'm still flat because I should be. There should not be any changes now. And I wanna come into the very last apartment building or the last double crochet before the end. Can you see where it is? It's right here. This apartment building already has the chain three coming out of, so the last stitch is here. A lot of new crocheters end up going into this spot, which is not a stitch. It's just right over top of the existing double crochet. So I'm technically done. So even though it feels like there's a space here, there's not. This is part of the joining. So you're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. So let's talk about the repeating. This was row number two. You have to now do rows number three all the way through 12, which will approximately make this 10 inches in the height going up. So all you're just going to do to start again is just chain three. That's your first double crochet. And then you look for your next double crochet that's available to you. It's right here and then you're just gonna double crochet around. So I want you to keep doing these around and around and around until you get to the 12th row done. If you wanna mark it down on a sheet of paper, it's easier. And it's also approximately gonna be 10 inches in the height as well. So if you wanna do that, if you want your snood to be even wider, just keep on going around and around until you're happy, right? It's no big deal. So what I'm going to do is that I'll show you how to finish your project in just a few moments from now. So get all of that done and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming back around again. Can you tell me where the last stitch is? It's right here. So look for those double crochets to show you where those stitches are. And again, that spacing that looks like it's leaning over looks like a space that's for crochet, but it's not. And when you slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three, you'll see that it will pull over. So once you have all of the rounds done, so you will have a total of 12 rounds done or 10 inches tall or whatever size that you want, I want you to cut the yarn that is leading towards the yarn balls. Keep them together and you wanna cut it long enough so that you can put it through a tapestry needle. So let's lock this in a position first. So we're just gonna take this and wrap it around the, and the needle and pull through. This will prevent it from pulling out and you're just gonna Pull, tug on, uh, pull snug on it. So the side you're looking at is called the right side. It's the side that people will see when they're looking at you. So I want you to put this through a tapestry needle. Any loose ends that you have, you will do the same thing. So I'll show you one time. So put them both through the tapestry needle. Okay. And I want you to turn it so that it's easier for you to see and turn it to the opposite side, which is the inside of your of your snood. Take the needle and I want you 
just to weave it in and out of the back side here. If you can separate the plies, not only just go between the stitches, but actually separate the plies, you will see that this will permanently hold in and you're just gonna pull through. You will not see that coming through on the good side of the work. You will then go back in the other direction through a slightly different path. Don't be afraid to split apart the plies. Usually when uh, stuff falls out is that people go between the plies and or go between the strands and not the plies. And then you're gonna go one more time back through. Okay, so any loose ends that you have, you wanna take care of it this way and pull snug. And then you can trim it right down so that you'll never see that. So the starting strands that you had, you want to do the same thing of just going back and forth to so turn it here, go back and forth the total three times. Now the, the pattern here has it so that you have tassels. There's three tassels that you can make and it says just evenly space and attach the three tassels to either side. So it can be the side or the side, it really doesn't matter. And so when you're wearing it and styling it, you'll notice that she has three tassels on her snood. So you can wear it straight on down, you can wrap it around the top of your head, you can wear it as a cowl. It's actually a pretty cool idea. So this is the Crochet Snood by yourinspirations.com. We hope that you have a good one and we'll see you again another time. Bye-bye now.